about to leave Already packing, come with me I'm not really asking We'll get away to a place where we don't know I press record. I can trim it. Hey, 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 Boss Babe Squad. Francesca Jeanette here. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, please click the subscribe button so you can see all of my new videos that are coming out. Also, click the like button for this video. You'll be excited to know I am doing a laundry room DIY makeover transformation. I'm super excited. Also, make sure you turn on the notifications for my channel so that anytime I post a new video, you'll be the first to be able to see it. And make sure you comment below and let me know what new content you'd like to see me do for this channel. And let's get started. Okay, so as I said before, I am doing a laundry room DIY makeover. Instead of hiring someone to redo everything, I just decided I'm gonna brace myself and do the project on my own, planning, researching on YouTube, researching on Google, and with the help of my handsome, handsome husband, we're gonna tackle this project on our own. I have a pretty small laundry room, so it shouldn't be that hard. It's just a matter of being organized and making sure everything is in the right place, and just making sure everything is easily accessible from where I'll be inserting the laundry into the washer and dryer and my ability to be able to reach everything from the cabinets. So we're going to go through buying the materials, cleaning up the laundry room, sorting everything, and finally putting everything together. So I'm excited for y'all to watch. Here we go. Okay y'all, so let's get into it, boss babe. So what I'm doing here now is just removing some of the structural components that's already in the laundry room, removing all the trash, the junk, the old products I used to use. Ever since I converted my home, I now use eco-friendly products, which is what you see here. It's called Tough and Tender, y'all, and it smells amazing. So I'm just cleaning, cleaning, removing some items off the walls, all of my husband's keychains and lanyards, good cheeses. And then getting um, some command strips off, which was a labor of love, you guys. <laughs> Trying to get this stuff off the walls was just so much trouble. So now I am putting some um, dry decks on the walls, filling in the holes, and then sanding with 120 um, edge detailing um, sandblock. Now I am going to clean up the floor because as we all know, the laundry room has so much lint and just gunk and we hardly ever go behind there to see what all has fallen and collected back there. So we're just gonna clean it right on up. Every last drop, y'all. <laughs> So what I'm doing now is I am trying to find the studs. This is going to be for my relocation of my wire rack. <laughs> I always like to dance, you guys. So I'm using a sander, and that has 220 grit paper on it. And I'm going to sand um, this plywood down, which is going to serve as my tabletop for my washer and dryer. It's gonna be where I fold my clothes, Keep all of my detergents and everything on there and it's just going to allow for more space to um, sit items on top of so I'm just sanding the edges sanding the top just making sure everything's smooth because I am going to be rubbing my hands over this folding clothes so I don't want to get any splinters while I'm doing that and you can tell your girl is excited <laughs> My DIY project is finally coming along. And there goes my hubby. He is so amazing and helped me with this project. Um, we are now gluing um, the covering for the wire rack. And we are placing an edge piece of wood on there so that it covers the full view of the wire rack. So the wire rack is actually going to serve as my shelving. For miscellaneous items like my essential oils, um, some plants, 
some lighting, etc. And I'm using finishing nails to actually nail this edger in. It's going to be great, y'all. It's going to be so great. When you're using the hammer, make sure that you are careful. Make sure that you do not stub your fingers. I've done this several times throughout this project, and I'm so thankful <laughs> that I haven't lost a finger during this project. But as you can see, I'm being very careful. If your nail bends, just make sure that you kind of hit it from the side with your hammer so you can get it back straight. Here we are now wiping off the excess glue. Now you guys, the glue I got was waterproof. Um, you may not want to get waterproof with glue only if it's not gonna be outside, only because um, once we got around to staining this, it did leave behind traces of the wood glue because the wood glue seeped into the wood. So make sure it's not water-based um, and uh, that way you'll be able to wipe it off easily and make sure it doesn't seep into the wood as soon as you see the glue dripping wipe it up ASAP seriously guys it will allow your wood to come out so much better so now we're going to edge to the tabletop and I decided to use wood glue as well as nails just for the added protection I'm going to be leaning up against this table so I didn't want only the nails to be there I want it to be um, nailed in flush the two pieces to be nailed in flush with each other so wood glue help just to add a little bit of extra security for fastening these two pieces of wood together my husband is such a great help y'all I love when we can do projects together this is one of the ways we spend quality time together so it's super fun so now we're going to use the mirror wax wood finish and you can choose whatever stain you want. I literally just picked up <laughs> one based on the picture and you can use a rag, you can use a foam roller, you can use a paintbrush. We decided to just use some old washcloths that we have that have kind of expired. <laughs> you know those cheap Walmart washcloths y'all be getting in those 10 packs those really rough ones that exfoliate the heck out of your skin. Yes, girl, we're using those. Why buy new tools when you can use what you got already, right? So we're staining, we're staining, we're staining, and pretty soon we'll have this bad boy covered. We're only gonna do the outside that's visible. Now we're gonna take Mirror Wax Fast Drying Polyurethane and we're going to use a foam roller to coat the tabletop so that we have a nice sheen on there. And it will protect this tabletop from any water that spills from wet laundry. And my husband is cutting out the two by fours and aligning them to the wall so that our tabletop will have something to sit on as far as support. I am staining the shelving that's going to go between the cabinets that we bought. And my husband is going to finish up the staining of the shelving while I paint the back accent wall. I didn't want the entire room to be gray. Um, this is Imperial Gray from Home Depot. I love this color, you guys. I love it. And I'm only going to bring it halfway down the wall because a portion of my back wall is going to be covered in subway tile so if you see me only going halfway it's not that I gave up it's just that why waste paint when it's going to be covered up anyway so I'm using a, um, a paintbrush to get that paint on there and an angled brush to actually do the edges you can use painter tape if you want I just decided not to because the cabinets was pretty much going to cover up the edges anyway Now here I'm relocating the wire rack. These are the pieces that the wire rack will actually sit in to provide structural support. So I'm adding this side with my drill and I'm adding the other side. Make sure you all use a leveler to make sure these two pieces are level so that your wire rack will not be lopsided. Now I'm hammering the anchors in because these are going into drywall. And here, 
my husband is drilling, he's pre-drilling holes for the cabinets. So that it's easier to nail into the studs that we already found. And here I am nailing my cabinet in. I got these cabinets from Home Depot, you guys. Okay, so fast forward, we are now going to drill in the shelving that we stained a little earlier. And make sure you pre-drill your holes, you guys. It makes drilling in the actual wood screws so much easier. Measure, measure, measure. And we're using a leveler to make sure it's level. Okay, so next day, you guys, me and Kylie are trying, trying, trying to get this tabletop in. It's a little uh, different scenario when you get it in and the wire rack is still in there. So when we first measured it, all this stuff wasn't in here before. The wire rack, the cabinets. So now we're struggling a little bit. So just make sure you leave room for the tabletop to fit in there. Now I'm going to show you guys the materials I used to actually build my rods to hang wet clothes in. I originally wanted to put a rod between the cabinets but it was not going to be enough room to hang the clothes. Um, they were just going to be dragging against the actual wood shelf that I built. So I decided to do these on the side and you can see me drilling in the actual um, hardware, the metal hardware. These are um, black iron pipes you guys. You can find them at Lowe's, Home Depot. And I just um, put in some 10 inch pipes into some, I think they're called flanges, and some end caps. And I'm putting them on both sides of my laundry room. Okay, so these are some canisters. I'm going to put some miscellaneous detergents in, some miscellaneous things like clothes pins, dryer sheets, some Melibrite um, tablets that I get from my shop club. I will use that in place of bleach. Some um, scent boosters, which are just for show. I don't use these, I just love the color of them. Everything laundry I get from my shop club. Um, some powdered oxy. And these I got from my shop club as well. They are pure dryer balls, and I'm so glad um, they were offering these. It was just in time for me to do my laundry makeover. And you just stick those in with your laundry so that it keeps your clothes from wrinkling and sticking together. Some powder detergent. And you guys, this is a two gallon um, glass jar. All the other ones were a gallon and 0.5 gallons. The 0.5 gallons were for the clothes pins and dryer sheets and everything else was a gallon. But I got these jars from Target. They're rare finds, so once you see them, grab them. And you see all of my products from my shop club, cleaning wise. Um, I actually love, love, love these products. You save a ton and it lasts you a long time. So finally guys, my project was stalled because these tiles literally took two weeks um, to come in. Due to COVID, everything was delayed. But these are peel and stick tiles. I didn't wanna do anything too costly or too time consuming or too permanent because this is not my forever home. I just needed something quick, easy, simple um, to add to the backsplash where I did not paint and to give a little bit more aesthetic to the actual laundry room. Subway tile in the laundry room is a big staple. It's so simple, um, it's so chic and modern and timeless all at the same time. So I chose subway tile in place of any other tile that I saw just because, you know, everyone likes subway tile. Like, how can you not? So these are shorter subway tile than what you normally see in the store, um, which I like. And I use some spray adhesive on the wall, which you don't have to, just to make sure it just stuck better and that the stick lasted longer. So you basically, basically just cut everything down to size and wrap it around existing fixtures and plugs and all of that good stuff. If you come across a plug, just cut a hole in the peel and stick easily with some box cutters or scissors. And that's the final product, you guys. It turned out so, so pretty. I'm so happy with this peel and stick. It's by Tic Tac Tiles and you can find them on Amazon. 
or order straight from their website and I'll post the information in the description box. Now I'm going to do my labels for all of the jars and things. Um, for these baskets, the actual chalk portions were already on there, so I just needed to take my chalk pen and write whatever I needed to write. So we have miscellaneous stuff. And then I found these cute labels at Hobby Lobby along with the chalk pen. So I'm gonna label all of my glass jars and anything else I feel that needs a label. So I have my Oxy, I have my scent boosters. And I'm just trying to think of everything that I put in the glass jars and kind of what I want to name it. Name everything what you want to name it so that everything in your laundry room or pantry or whatever you're redoing is organized to your liking. This is your project. This is your house. This is your room. So the easiest way for you to find stuff at first glance, label it as such. So we're almost done with the sheet. Um, I think the actual label sheet came with maybe about five or six sheets. So I have plenty. And then if for some reason you rub up against the labels by accident, you can always take a damp um, washcloth and wipe the chalk off and start over. Just let the label dry first before you rewrite on it. A great investment, you guys. Okay, so moving on to the second sheet. I only have a couple of more to go. I've never really labeled anything before, so this was pretty fun for me. Um, I'm good with organizing stuff, but as far as labels are concerned, this will be my first time actually partaking in labels. So time to decorate you guys. I got these baskets from Dollar General. I got the succulents that I'm putting up from Dollar General. I got this laundry sign. I've been looking all over for this sign. I got it from Hobby Lobby. After almost giving up, I found one at Hobby Lobby. Amazon had some, but they just were not cost effective <laughs> at all. All of the copper material I found at either Dollar General or Family Dollar. Here's the M for my last name. Add some um, spruces of greenery to your stuff, you guys. It makes the project you're doing pop even more. I found this watering pail and the greenery at Hobby Lobby. I just decided to combine the two so it looks like it's growing out of the watering pail. And these puck lights I got from Home Depot. Adding my stuff to my baskets, my extra clothespins for my lost sock board, a lint tool, lint removing tool, um, keychain holder since this is near the garage. <clears throat> this is where we can house our keychains and our keys. And this is the lost sock area <laughs> where you can clothespin lost socks. So I got these copper cups from Amazon that are gonna be used to scoop the detergent. And we're just gonna place the detergent in wherever I see fit. Um, I usually put the big stuff at the back and then fill in the little spaces with you know, smaller objects. But all of my items that I'm gonna regularly use are gonna be on the tabletop. And you just fill in everything else that's labeled. Your accessories, your laundry items. So here are two essentials that I absolutely need while doing laundry. I've replaced all of my old laundry detergent with these two. It's Melipower laundry detergent and pre-spot which is a stain remover and some essential oils that I add to my dryer balls to keep my clothes super fresh and clean. All from my shop club. 
There are my hanging racks, which my husband will probably use more than I will for his work clothes. Our key stand, since the laundry room is right beside our garage. My open sign, my laundry sign, both from Hobby Lobby. And other little knickknacks I found from the Dollar General and Family Dollar. I was so inspired to do this project and I hope it inspires you. I learned a lot about myself, my strengths, my weaknesses. And overall, just doing this project with my husband just allowed us to have a lot of quality time to spend together and get to know each other a lot better. Doing DIY projects will definitely test your gangsta, okay? <laughs> but we did it. It's done. I'm so excited. Thank you for watching my video and thank you for subscribing to my channel. Please like this video and share it with your friends. Bye. You see up my nose? You see snot? I can't, I can't see anything.